Okay, so these are the period four problems worked out. So here we had an equation. I combined the two logs into one. I brought this over and I combined it with them. I brought the two to this side. 10 to that power is that. Bring this over here. Add the x, subtract the fraction. You get this number right there. And then let's see here. So uh, the goal here was to do this without a calculator. It said solve, but I'm assuming it said simplify because there's no equation, right? There's no equal sign. So here, look, I'm going to say this is about zero because of this guy here. You see 10 to the power of negative 57, that's the same as one over 10 to the power of 57. This number is huge. One divided by a huge number is basically zero, basically. And zero times all this stuff here is basically, basically, basically zero. Cool problem. Now this one here, this, this limit with an infinite series or with a finite series, this guy here, if, now that I look at this again, technically, uh, using calculus, this is going to be zero as well. Because all of these guys are infinite denominators, and the top is just one. And so one over infinity is zero, and this is finite because it goes from here to there. So this is a bunch of zeros being added together. I'm going to call it zero. So I changed my previous answer. I'm just going to say that this is zero, although I do think that the structure of this it is a little flawed. Maybe a couple of problems were meshed together, but I think this has to be, look a little different. Let's see here, uh, solve for A, but the thing here is that there's A, Y, and X. If there are three variables, there have to be at least three equations. So if I have one equation with three variables, I cannot really solve for any of them. So in a sense, my hands are tied up, right? I need more equations to accompany uh, this one equation there. Uh, so this one here, in x, f and g are inverses, so these knock out, it's f of this. But here they define that f of x is x, the identity function, whatever you input, it's the same output. So we're going f of all of this. But that for, log 4, 4 is just 1, and then 1 to this power is just going to be 1. They didn't tell me what q is, but I'm assuming q is just the real finite number, so it'd just be 1. Th this equation here actually has no solution because if you graph it on Desmos, this is the graph. And this graph never strikes the x-axis, so it has no solution, or at least no real solution. So it might have a solution, but it's not going to be a real number. Maybe it's something with eyes and stuff. So here I had an absolute value inequality, and I solved it, and I got back this guy here. But I said x can't be zero, so it removes the equality at zero. But now look, just because x is between here doesn't mean that it's going to be one. X can be anything between zero and one. So I think the direction is meant to include that x has to be an integer. If that's the case, x is 1. And then they said, find the natural log of x. Well, if x is 1, the natural log of 1 is 0. Really cool problem. Really nice. Oh, I like this one. This one was wicked cool. So a crazy equation. This plus this plus this. This is a number and so is this. I subtracted this from that. And then I brought these exponents to the front. I combined the two logs into 1. I divided by this to get rid of it. Then I said 10 to the 0 is 1 equals that. And so x has to be pi. This was a cool problem. Let's see here. I, I use Desmos here. I brought the coefficient to the top. I moved this to this side. I graphed on Desmos and it gave me an approximate value of this guy here. If you got something else, let me know. But as is currently written, that would be the approximate solution to that problem there. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that would be it. Yeah, that would be it there. It's because, look, there's different logs there, right? There's different logs there. But, yeah, that would be it for that one. And then let's see what's up with this guy here. Now, they said solve for x. But notice that uh, this is not an equation. It's a function, right? Because this is f of x. A function can be graphed and a function can be evaluated. But if this is not a number, then I can't really get x alone per se. So I would need this to be turned into a number, and then I could probably get x alone. So as this, I would, I would need this to be modified a little bit. Now here I solve this equation. See, this is a number. And I took that number and divided it by 2. And then to get x alone, I raised both sides to the 1 over this to get this approximate value. They said graph this. So I graphed the solution. x equals a number is a vertical line. And in domain and range, the domain of this vertical line is just that number to itself. And the range is all reals because it goes up and down forever. So these are the period four problems. Thank you guys for your effort and for your creativity. I always love doing these kinds of things. So now let me go and take care of period number five.